Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part five of my code refactoring tutorial. Today, I'm going to do a tutorial that's going to explain how to replace constructors with factory methods. This is something you definitely need to know how to do because you're going to do this a lot with code refactoring. And this tutorial basically was put together in the last hour, and part of this I'm going to do completely out of my head because I received this challenge, which I guess Emil received from his professor out there. Emil is somebody that watches my videos, I guess. And the professor asked people to to create a class called athlete with subclasses for gold, silver, and bronze winners. Make it so once an athlete receives a medal, no other athletes can be assigned to that medal subclass. And on top of that, the program isn't allowed to contain conditional statements of any kind. So since this was something that I wanted to get into anyway, I figured I would go ahead and solve Emil's challenge question. So let's get into it. All right, so here I am in Eclipse, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to answer the challenge question here after I do this. I'm going to show you how to replace constructors with factories. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a class called Customer2, and it's going to have a bunch of other customers that are going to be rated based off of whether they are premier, valued, or deadbeat customers, meaning how soon they pay their bills, I would guess. And I'm actually going to show you this in two different ways. So this is going to be a customer customer rating system and I'm going to have things at least for now until I change it and make it a lot more dynamic I'm going to have the information passed in regards to what type of customer they are based off of these final variables and they are going to have a number assigned to them I'm going to show you a much cooler way of doing this very dynamically here after I do it this first way and then I'm going to need to get my getters and my setters for customer rating so just because I I showed you this before might as well do it again here's source quick and easy way inside of Eclipse to create my getters and my setters and I'm just going to do it for customer rating and then I want everything to show up after deadbeat so hit okay and there we are so now we got all that set up and for now that is all that I'm going to do inside of customer 2 now I need to come in here and create all of my subclasses for all these different types of customers so class and premier extends customer 2 and all these guys are gonna do is have a constructor inside of them basically just to show you that yes everything worked so and we're gonna make a call to customer rating and assign this to premier customer so each one of these customers or subclasses are the only difference is going to be based off of the customer rating that's inside of them of course I trust that you know that you can add as many different methods as you want to the subclasses the important part is the factory is going to create all these and then we're going to have valued just change this to valued and change this to valued so these are all my subclasses and all the code is available in a link underneath the video and here is my deadbeat and and I deadbeat I just made they don't pay their bills that's all I don't know why a lot of times I just come up with these things right out of my head so and now we need to create our customer factory the factory design pattern is extremely simple basically all that we're gonna do here is it is going to create a bunch of subclasses based off of a message that is sent of a specific superclass that superclass being customer 2 and those subclasses being deadbeat valued and premier so I am going to break the rules here for a second in regards to the question that was passed over to me and I'm actually going to use a switch statement in a second I'm going to show you how to avoid the switch statement and make all of your code much more dynamic and very often I write bad code on purpose so that you see what not to do or if you see yourself doing something you go hey wait a minute I did this and there's a better way and then of course you can refer to the code and make it better so I'm gonna go customer type this is going to be passed one of those integers and then I'm just going to say in here case and in this situation this is going to be return new premiere and then I'm basically going to do exactly the same things for the other options this is going to be one and this is going to be zero and this is going to return a valued object and this is going to return a deadbeat and then we could do something like default and throw an illegal argument exception which just basically means that they didn't follow the rules they did not enter a zero one or a two customer type 
And now what I'm going to do is come up inside of customer two, just for the heck of it, and create main inside of here, just to test it. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to create my factory that's going to spit out the right objects based off of the information that I send. So I'm just going to call it customer factory is equal to new customer factory. Now that I got that all created, I'm going to go customer two to call this factory, and I'm going to define my good customer. And that is just going to be equal to calling the customer factory get customer and then passing it this is good customer I'm just gonna pass it premiere in this situation right like that and you're gonna see here that it dynamically went in there and created that so I'm just gonna say customer rating good customer and I can just come in here and click get customer rating and then execute it and you're going to see that it comes back customer rating is premier customer so there you are dynamically created a factory that creates and spits out the right subclass based off of information being passed into it but what about this whole thing where we're not allowed to have conditional statements of any type well guess what this is a conditional this is a switch we are not allowed to have that no problem i'm going to come in here and delete that and then i'm going to surround everything with a try block and to make this dynamic i'm going to go return I'm going to be returning a subclass of customer two, and how I'm going to get the right one is I'm going to change get customer into a string. So let's change this to customer name because that seems to make more sense. And then down here, I'm going to call class for name, and I'm going to put customer name inside of here. See, there's customer name, and what for name does for me is it's going to return a class object that has the same name as the string that I pass to it. And then once I get that class object, I can just go new instance, and that is going to create a new instance of that class. See, dynamic, pretty cool. And then let's say that I wanted to do a catch illegal argument exception or I could just type in exception like that whatever this isn't exactly the important part and then print out invalid customer and now I'm going to be able to create additional subclasses without any problem at all and I just need to come up here and change this guy right here get customer it is now going to pass over premiere which is the name of my class see premiere it's going to automatically create instances based off of that so let's file save it and execute it and you can see customer rating premiere customer comes back to me so pretty cool. However, if they would type in deadbeat, just dynamically, just by changing this one thing here, file save, execute, you can see customer rating, deadbeat customer. So there you are, dynamically, automatically generating subclasses using a factory instead of the normal constructor way of handling it. So now let's get back to solving Emil's problem that he sent me. Now basically, what am I saying here? As I read this, create a class called Athlete with subclasses for gold, silver, and bronze winners. Okay, well that's kind of generic. That's not really a big deal there. But then I see here the program isn't allowed to contain conditional statements. Okay, well you know how I'm going to solve that. Now this is the part that I haven't covered yet. Make it so once an athlete receives a medal, no other athletes can be assigned to that medal subclass. Well that means to me singleton. That's the singleton pattern. So that's what I'm going to use to create or solve this challenge. And if you haven't seen my factory or singleton design pattern tutorials, I provide links to them above. So now let's just jump in here and let's start writing some code. So I need to create an athlete class not a problem and private string athlete name and I'm gonna assign that and then I'm gonna come in here and create my gators and my setters generate getter setter athlete name okay there we are got that all done now since I know I'm gonna use a singleton and all a singleton is going to do is it is going to be a subclass that is only going to have one instance and only one instance ever so how we do that is go public static athlete get instance and for this guy since it's never actually going to be called I'm just going to have it return null and that's all that I'm going to need to do for that right now then we need to create our subclasses like I said before all this code is available in the link underneath the video so gold winner extends athlete and then I'm going to create a private static because these guys are only ever going to have one instance I need a way to track whether an instance of this gold medal winner has ever occurred before so I'm going to set it as null in the very beginning then I need to create a constructor and set it to private to keep other classes from being able to create an instance of the gold winner because remember it said once a gold winner has been designated there can no longer be any more gold winners but I'm gonna need to construct these objects myself so I do need this constructor inside of here 
And for this one, I'm just going to set athlete name to whatever the athlete name is. And there we are. And then this guy down here is what will be called whenever we need to create our one instance of their gold winner. So gold winner, get instance. And there may be a better way of doing this. I'm just sort of doing it out of my head because you guys seem to like when I do this. So you can see what it's like to think through these problems. So now what am I going to do to guarantee that only one instance is ever created? Well, I'm going to go if gold athlete is equal to null, that means an instance of it doesn't exist because that's this guy right here. So that means it is safe for me to create a instance of it for the first time. Remember, it's okay to create one instance, but once someone has been assigned to be the gold winner, they cannot be replaced. So, hey, this is their challenge. It's not mine. So <laughs> it sounds at all a little bit goofy. And otherwise, I'm just going to return gold athlete, whether it is a new one, which means it got here, or whether the athlete was already assigned in that situation, I'll just return the old gold athlete again. So if they say, I want to create a new gold athlete, I, in essence, just say, nay, you can't do that. And whenever they say, well, give me the gold athlete, I send them the original. That's all I'm doing. And I'm going to be able to copy this because it's identical for the silver winner. So there's my silver winner. And I just need to change this to silver winner. Silver winner, silver winner, silver winner, and silver winner. And then I need to change this to silver athlete instead of gold athlete. And there we are and then return my silver athlete and then guess what I need to do the same thing for bronze and then bronze winner is gonna replace silver winner is gonna replace this one and the only reason I'm able to do a lot of this stuff fast is because I've done this so many times and I know the design patterns I mean that's it another benefit of design patterns once you figure out how to solve something one time you can just pull that out of your head and do it again and again and bronze athlete and bronze athlete and bronze athlete so there you are doing pretty much the same thing we did in the first code that I wrote here and now I need to create my metal factory so new class metal factory and all it's going to do is spit out the right subclass based off of the type of subclass that is asked for and we're going to do it in the same way that we did it previously so get metal and I'm going to do something a little bit cooler here though so get metal type and let's say that the athlete's name is passed in as well to my factory then I'm going to do another try block just like before but then I'm going to need to make a call to a very specific method now if I was just creating a constructor from this and I could just call the constructor that would be cool but I'm not allowed to do that I have to call get instance now it doesn't sound like that's tricky but it kind of is I'm gonna use reflection in this situation because I can't think of any other way like right off the top of my head how to do this so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna need to make an instance of this method get instance and I'm gonna need to call it and pass the string is the athlete's name and then generate all my subclasses from that point on if anybody out there can think of a better way I might think of one 10 minutes after I'm done with this so if I want to use reflection what I need to do here is define the type of parameter that will be passed to the method that I'm gonna create here in a second and that method is gonna be get instance see so what type of data am I gonna be sending I'm gonna be sending a string so I need to set that up inside of this and I have a reflection tutorial if you guys want to look into this further or just leave a question below believe me I use reflection all the time so feel free to send me questions so I just need to say okay this is going to be a string which is going to be the athlete's name that's going to be passed inside of that and that's how that is defined okay so after I tell it what type of information is going to be passed I'm going to use for name again to return the class object by passing it the string that is passed to it so I'm going to come in here and create a method this is how you do that and I'm going to call this get instance method because that's what this is called see get instance method so that's where it's coming from now to get this method I need to go class dot for name and metal type is what I'm going to put inside of here that's how I'm going to decide which type of class I'm going to use and then I want to grab a specific method out of that class so I need to go get method and then get instance is the name of the method that I'm going to be calling and the parameter types that I'm going to be passing to it is this it's going to be a string there it is so now it knows it's getting a string all right so now that that is all set up and this is giving me an error saying that I need to bring in my reflection library import method Java language reflection and there it is Java language reflection so this is a little another review of reflection because that's another thing that seems to confuse people sometimes okay so now I have that method and I'm able to call it and if I didn't 
say it strongly enough, get method, what it does is it's going to return the method that is provided, which is get instance, and then the second parameter inside of here is going to define the type of parameter that is passed to that method. And he get instance and a string, okay? So that's all that is. Well, then what I'm going to need to do is create an array with the parameter value that is going to be passed over to the method get instance. And how you do that is create an object array. And I'm just going to call this params. Go new object. And I just need to pass in the athlete's name. See, here I define what type of data type is going to get passed. And here I actually pass the data type. So I'm just going to go new string athlete name. And there we are. And now I just need to pass the parameters to the method get instance and then return a subclass of the type athlete. And I'm done. So we can just go athlete get instance method which is this guy right here so for those people that are saying my tutorials haven't been complicated enough lately here you are and then I'm just gonna put a null inside of there and then inside of this I'm gonna put the athletes name that's gonna be passed over to that method and then it's gonna give me a return value which is gonna be converted into an athlete and then it is going to be returned once it is called. So this is really cool. I mean, this is a fun little tutorial. And then I can just do catch exception E. And then I'm going to jump over here and just get this thing. Guess I deleted it already. Either way, throw new legal argument. This is just here for exactly the same reason if they try to create a class that doesn't exist. Invalid. In this situation, it's going to be athlete type. Blah, 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 blah. I can make that better here soon. And let me just look here for a second because, like I said, I'm just kind of doing this out of my head. I want to make sure that I'm doing everything right. I think, I think, I think, I think. I think I got everything. There's athlete. There's gold winner, silver winner winner, bronze winner, and metal factory. Okay, so now I'm going to actually just test this to see if I did it all right. Class, test, metal, factory. Nah, I don't want to call it that. I want it to be test metal winner. That makes a little bit more sense. Don't want to get confused. Static void main, string, args, metal factory. Got to create my factory just like I did before. And then I'm going to create my athletes. And how I'm going to do that is go metal factory, get metal. And then what are we going to pass in? Well, metal type in this situation, this is going to be gold winner because that's the name of the class that I want to call dynamically. And then the athlete's name in this situation, I'm going to mark as Dave. Thomas, and let's go in here and let's create all our metal winners, and then we can test to make sure that we are fulfilling all of our requirements by trying to create a new metal winner after we created the first one and see that it's going to just kick it out. So this is going to be silver winner, and this is going to be bronze winner. Again, from these classes up here, see, bronze winner right there, silver winner, see? So all I'm gonna need to do is create a new subclass anytime I wanna add an additional metal. Don't need to touch this code. And there's bronze winner. And let's just throw some random names in here. How about Mac, Mick, Donald, and the last guy can be David Edgerton. And I'm picking those names for a funny reason. See if you can figure it out. And then let's say that I wanna come in here and print out a new gold winner. I wanna to try to create a new gold winner. Well, we're not supposed to be able to. I'm gonna put gold winner new and then inside of here I'm gonna leave this be gold winner just like before and then here Ray Kroc is going to go in there. So if I didn't do this in any special way, there should now be a new gold winner or two gold winners. And now I can go gold winner and gold winner. And you can see get athlete name is what I want to shoot out on a screen. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my bronze winner or my silver winner first. And then my bronze winner and my silver winner and my bronze winner. And let's file save it, execute. And it didn't call the right one. So what I need to do in that situation. This is good because I get questions like this all the time. I want to execute test metal winner. I just click on it and then come down here and click on run as Java application. Click and you can see gold winner comes back as Dave Thomas and then just like I have it defined here, Mac McDonald, again, silver, and bronze winner, David Edgerton. Now, what happened with poor Ray Kroc down here? Well, you might be saying, well, the reason why it didn't come up that way is because here you defined gold winner new, and there it's gold winner. Eh, not really, because here I'm going to type in gold winner, new, file save, execute it again, and you're going to see that Dave Thomas, Mac McDonald, and David Edgerton still have their medals. So there is a rundown of some things to think about. If you didn't quite catch everything, don't worry about it. You can either leave a question or comment below, or I'm going to be covering these topics in future tutorials. So feel free to leave a question, comment, or request below.
Otherwise, till next time.